Gaming pre-orders are rightfully taken to task for being more detrimental to gamers than not. I agree, dude. I say this all the time. Um, I am very, very, very reluctant and hesitant to um, buy into any kind of pre-order or uh, even quite often day one purchase unless I'm very comfortable with a developer anymore. Um, because the um these these and it, it's just full of gimmicks too well buy the game and you can get in and play three days earlier when usually the three days early is just uh riddled with bugs and everything they need to patch out anyway so the better play is like the people that get to play on the default release date are the ones that are getting the better experience anyways <laughs> It's almost like you're like the beta beta tester if you get in uh, to the early access, you know, uh, or, or like the early release date stuff. There's all kinds of gimmicks, man. Like, I will give you uh, a really cool cloak that you can wear around. You can put it on your dog. And, you know, it's, uh, I mean, is it really worth like the extra 25 bucks that you're pushing in the game? No, no, it's not. Um, not for most people, you know. Gaming pre-orders are rightfully taken to task for being more detrimental to gamers than not. There was a world not so long ago that required discs for playing games. Uh, it's still around. Dying, but still around. A limited number of copies. I mean, I'm surprised we're still there, but we're there. A limited number of copies of a title would be produced, and if players weren't on the pre-order list, they could be denied the covetous privilege of playing a game on day one. Or if demand was high enough for weeks, if not months. In the modern age, discs are a relic of the past. Not really. On PC, they are. With most gamers opting for the stress-free experience of downloading a digital copy. Consumers are moving away from pre-orders. Why aren't companies? Pre-ordering goes all the way back to the 1980s. After the 83 market crash, retailers were leery of overstocking merchandise that might never see revenue and were unwilling to subject themselves to another Atari video game burial. An urban legend turned into truth when a New Mexico landfill turned up thousands of unsold Atari systems and games. Yes. Pretty sure there's a ton of uh, E.T. games. Uh, as Right? Weren't there some of the main ones? Uh, in order to insulate themselves from any outside issues, retailers and distributors purchased smaller quantities of games and waited to stock shelves until sales were all but guaranteed. In response, players had only one option if they wanted to ensure they got a copy uh, pre-order. We don't live in a world of cartridges or quantity disparities anymore. There is an argument to be made about the longevity of a physical copy during an age where platforms can revoke access to digital materials on a whim, but it's a protection for consumers rather than a necessity for companies. I'm also going to immediately say that indie games are more than welcome to continue to rely on pre-orders. Absolutely. A very ne necessary lifeline for smaller studios. Yep. According to Exola, indie studios can net between 15 to 28% of their total pre-launch sales the day pre-orders are available to the public. Many indie studios make between 20 to 30% of their first year sales with pre-orders. Most indie studios don't charge $70 for a base game now, do they? No, they don't. This gripe comes during a year of buggy releases from massive AAA studios with budgets of millions, uh, staff of hundreds, and enough shareholders to pad their pockets. Yeah, it's been a weird year. The past year of gaming has been riddled, plagued with terrible releases, terrible performing releases. And then this calendar year we've also had some absolute bangers you know indie dave the diver shadow release uh by a triple a company in tango and hi-fi rush uh, shadow dropped a 30 dollar price point by a triple a dev uh incredibly refreshing to see that and then um obviously Baldur's Gate 3 just happened which is blowing uh, you know the gaming industry out of the water right now um, blowing everybody's minds. Um, we've had Tears of the Kingdom. You know, there have been a lot of fantastic games, and there's more to come, right? Starfield's about to hit. We'll see how that does. A lot of hype around it. There are uh, even more games down the line for the rest of this year that are supposed to be good. But, dude, there have been a ton of bad ones, too. Jedi Survivor, ton of Tecmo games. You know what I mean? Um, 
like Wolong, um, Wild Hearts. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It just, uh, I mean, the uh, Hogwarts Legacy was a absolute atro- atrocity on PC. Um, it, it, there are a ton of just terrible releases, you know. So the last decade has been sh- uh, stained by this conversation, and yet. We're still having it every year in almost every release. Despite thousands of gamers rebelling against the norm, companies still force the issue and rely on pre-orders to guesstimate how successful a title will be. Perhaps the worst thing of all is the the petty little gifts agreed. The developers used to incentivize gamers. There are a number of players who have been jilted by the practice, and the list of egregious titles is lengthy. There isn't a game that makes a better case for how broken this system is than Cyberpunk. Thank you. I agree. It's been years since the title dropped. CD Projekt Red is still nursing its reputation back to health. Uh, <clears throat> just before that, it was No Man's Sky, which we just talked about. Here's my thing. The difference being here, and I've I've said this earlier today. I've said this time and time again. These companies do not deserve awards, accolades, commendations, kudos, props, whatever, for sticking by their games and making them be what they were supposed to be originally. They did their job. It is not acceptable what they did in releasing titles that were broken or did not meet what they were telling everybody was supposed to be in the game content wise. Doesn't matter. What's not acceptable and just because they stuck by the game doesn't mean they deserve to have recognition for it. They did their job. They did the job finally that they should have done before the game ever released in the first place. Now, the difference being between these two examples here of CDPR with Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky with, uh, or Hello Games with No Man's Sky, is there's a big difference here. Hello Games being a developer that felt terrible about what happened with their release. They felt terrible. They didn't want their reputation to be ruined. They wanted to make it up to their community and their fans. And so what they've done ever since, and we just touched on in an article just previous to this, is for the past seven years since that game's release, they have continued to release massive amounts of content that you don't have to pay anything extra for. If you own the base game, you get it. And that was what they've determined they needed to do to give back to the community and the consumers and the gaming enthusiasts that wanted to be a part of their title and to show them that they're sorry and that they care. Which tells me that Hello Games at least is something of a decent company, right? Um, So for the past seven years, They have continued to, outside of even making the game up to the point of what they promised it would be in the first place. After that, they've continued to do content update, content update, content update that is just included as part of the base game. All you have to do is buy the base game, which goes on sale for half off all the time, $30 price point, and you can just get all that content. You don't have to buy DLC. You don't have to buy expansions or anything. It's just part of the game. As opposed to some a company like CDPR, right? Which, um, let's be fair, they've got a huge fan base because they're very good at content. They're very good at content, narrative, story, the writing, um, character. You know their 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 character backgrounds and and the lore and their their universes and stuff are very good, but. I played Witcher 3 in full last year on PC. The entire, I played Blood and Wine. I played Heart of Stone. I played the entire base game. It still crashed on me a number of times. It's still a hot buggy mess. And it's not even nearly as bad as what I understand it was on release. And then Cyberpunk was atrocious across all platforms. And now... You get quotes coming out from a company like CDPR saying, 
uh, you know, their the heads of their their development, their company saying things like, well, with Liberty City coming out, everybody will finally be able to experience cyberpunk like it was originally meant to be experienced. You know, what our vision for the game was. But anybody that bought this game on previous gen console can't play it. You released the game on previous gen consoles, but anybody that owns game on previous gen console can't play your expansion, which apparently to you means that they don't matter. It doesn't matter to you that the the game is finally going to be able to be experienced the way you meant it to be experienced, but those people that bought into your, your title on the platforms it was originally released on can't, can't experience that. Not only that, but in my opinion, Liberty City should have been part of the base game. Because of what you did to 13 million people, yeah, you duped 13 million people on pre-orders and on on release sales for Cyberpunk. 13 million sales between pre-release sales and um was it 13 I think it was 13. 13 million, I think it was something like that. Um <clears throat> between pre-release and and on release sales, it was like around 13 million copies. <clears throat> and um instead of of you know trying to show their fan base, their customer base that they're remorseful for what they did or anything like that, they come out with this DLC. And I know that I'm going to have people that, that comment on this and go, well, they spent all the time making the DLC. They got to make money off of it. If it's good enough content, if it's good enough content, they could add it to the base game. It would help with the reputation of their company by being a bit of an, we're sorry for what we did with Cyberpunk in its release. And if it's good enough content, it will bring people in to play the game that haven't played it before. So they'll be purchasing Cyberpunk as a retail copy. Okay? So people that say that, uh, you know, like, act like they wouldn't be making money off of it if they didn't sell it as a DLC, you're wrong. Would they make quite as much? Probably not, which is what just shows me that CDPR isn't anything but concerned with greed. They don't care all that much about content or performance or taking care of the community or anything. They're concerned with greed, as opposed to a company like Hello Games, which actually is concerned about their reputation and taking care of their consumer base and their, their, their community, their fan base, right? But these are two great examples that I use all the time. Um... The issue is permeating all sex of gaming. Even a multiplayer hero shooter like Overwatch isn't safe from the predatory practice. No shortage of games that have royally burned players, and yet all that has come of the horrid practice is apology letters and promises to do better. Cyberpunk was bad enough that refunds were given in mass, but it did nothing to solve the problem. And why do we do it? For the paltry skins or weapons that developers are kind enough to dangle in front of you as a reward. More often than not, those useless cosmetics are made free when the game is ported or once it gets old enough. Look at one of the 17 times Skyrim has been re-released. Yes. Over the decade, those coveted DLCs that cost me more than a 20-something could afford are all included in one bundle or a repackaged complete edition. The whole concept of limited time only cosmetics or weapons is a fabricated scarcity. One that literally shouldn't exist in a digital world. And it becomes more insulting when the price of any one game jumps from $70 to $300 depending on the version you purchase. This is literally what I was just talking about with Destiny 2, right? So when this game released, it was a base game purchase price. Now it's a free-to-play, really a free-to-try game, where if you want the entire experience of the whole game, you're going to have to buy DLC that costs you over $400, right? Um, there's a reason to charge more for still bookcases or physical art books and soundtracks, but a digital version needs no extra cost. It makes me, it makes one wonder why, uh, how much of those extra proceeds go to the artists behind the product, how much ends up in the shareholders pockets. Most of it, most of it, no secret. The companies are greedy, tend to fabricate circumstances to drive up their profit margins. But for a long time, it seemed like the video game industry was somewhat insulated as players. We were all we were all startled to learn about the horrendous crunch conditions foisted on many developers, but the stain of greed seems to be spreading. Worst of all, when outliers like Larian Studios 
doing God Gamer's work. Gamer God's work, dude, with Baldur's Gate 3, developers behind Baldur's Gate 3, broke the mold. Developers cry witch and refuse to learn from the process despite gamers' high praise and adoration. Exactly. Oh, this game's an anomaly. You, nobody should be looking in, toward uh, at this game as, uh, you know, what games should be in the you know moving forward or anything. Why? Larian did a bang up job. It granted, not every developer is going to have those amount of resources at their disposal to make a game to the same magnitude of what Baldur's Gate Three is. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't continue to be evolving in the right ways, which is what Boulder's Gate 3 is and what Larian Studios has done, and setting standards higher, setting that bar higher to where other developers have something that they should be reaching towards in different facets of their, their game creation, right? They might not be able to hit all of those. They probably won't. Boulder's Gate 3 is a, a massively huge, complete title that most RPGs are not going to be hit, be able to hit all of those same um, levels on, right? But re reaching for the same is what you should be doing to the greatest extent that you can. Instead of going, oh, nobody should be looking at our titles and thinking that, uh, you know, it, it's a bad look, dude. It's a bad look. The industry has created a problem that only it can solve. But before it does, we have to stop throwing our money at broken, half-assed, or outright falsely advertised games. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, Ash Martinez. Holy crap, dude. What a great flipping article. Jesus. Um, Literally, uh, some of the most malding things to me. I mean, you guys know that hang out here very often. I, I mauled out on this kind of stuff all the time. It really gets, gets me amped up. A lot of what I try to do in these uh, news segments is talk about things that I think are bad for the health of us as consumers and gaming enthusiasts. And a lot of what was talked about in this article, written about in this article by Ash, was uh, exactly what I tend to harp on all the time, man, about the things that are done wrong to us in the industry. But it, it continues to happen because consumers feed into it. People need to be better at taking a critical look about what's going on, what's happening to us, what these businesses are doing to us, and stop supporting it, man. If you don't stop supporting these things that they do to us, it will not, it won't stop. It's just snowball effect, man, and it has been for years on end. It just continues to happen. And um, that's why, like, I mean, I obviously can't tell anybody what to do with their money, but it's only going to get worse and worse if we don't acknowledge what they are doing to us. Look at the good studios like Larian and Tango. You know what I mean? For for doing taking care of us as the consumer and and trying to make us fans of their company for the long haul because we know that they're doing right by us. We know it's a business. We know these are businesses. We know they need to make money. But there's a right way to make money in this industry, right? There's a right way to make money in this industry. And it's by creating good content, create, creating quality products, and doing it in a way that you're also taking care of us as the consumer and as, as your community of gamers, right? But those last two things are... are, are often left out and nowadays quite often uh, the entire all four of those are gone right horrible content badly performing games and and they don't care about taking care of us as as the consumer or the gaming enthusiast right as their as their fan base and their community of gamers um and so but but people because people get lost in the I love Star Wars or I love, you know what I mean? Uh, any kind of specific developer or what have you, they'll just buy into it. Even though, like, I mean, dude, I Elden Ring was terrible on PC on release and I'm really excited about Armored Core 6. I love mech games. I won't buy it on release. There's no flipping way. If you get bit, don't get bit again. Not until they show you, a, a developer shows you a track record of being able to do better in the future. 
From Software, dude, is obviously people love From Software games. They they are incredibly talented at creating content, but it was quite obvious that their Elden Ring release on PC was a port of their console version, and it performed very poorly on PC. Anytime a game is not optimized for PC, directly developed for PC, you'll get people that it plays okay, people that plays mediocre, and people that can't hardly play it at all. That is always the case. And there were key signs through that entire playthrough for me that it was uh, a PC, it was ported to PC from console. So uh, I won't play those games anymore on release. I'll wait and see how they perform. But great article, Ash, fantastic. God, it's so refreshing to uh, hear somebody write about these sentiments that I express all the time. Fantastic, fantastic article.